Next Focus brought to you by IG, a super special show today. We're going to get real theoretical here with our friend Paul Capetta. Paul, thanks as always for joining us here on the show, uh, especially for what will really need your help here. We're going to talk about some statistical theory. We're going to apply it to Forex markets. And then we're going to also take a look at how you can lend theory to not only practice in trading something like a dollar yen pair, but also in the IG platform, how you can take a, a strategy of your own, set different guidelines, and pretty easily put it in the order ticket in one fell swoop, right? Yeah, exactly. Thanks for having me again, Frank. But this is an interesting topic. It's a little bit different than what we normally talk about, but it's, it's a good topic some higher volatility it's good to have a strategy ready yeah absolutely and and before we get into the strategic piece where we're really going to lean on my friend paul here going to do some quick nerding out around some math and and this is like a classic case of everybody knows this stuff like this is part of your trader dna it's in your subconscious all the time but sometimes it's good to put the actual numbers and formulas and everything out there so that you can be like, oh, okay, so that's what is going on. That's how I create, uh, attempt to create a profitable strategy. And here are a couple of tools that I can use from my friends, Frank and Paul, to, you know, set up some stricter mechanics around that. So, uh, for instance, my average loss doesn't get so much bigger than my average profit and everything else. But before we get to that, let's talk about creating a positive expectation. Because this is, like I say, really in the subconscious of most traders. First of all, if you're trading a market like Forex or anything else, you're trying to create profits, right? Like uh, th that's the, the whole thing is to, um, you know, empower yourself to create profitable strategies and make money at the end of the day. And here you have the theoretical version of that, which is just looking at my average profit in a given market, a given strategy. Okay, that times my win rate, and then I take out my average loss times one minus my win rate, affecting my, my loss rate. And that needs to be greater than zero to create a consistently profitable strategy. Um, hopefully that formula isn't anything too crazy because, like I say, it's kind of like second nature. It's common sense. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, I just what I usually do when I look at these formulas, I try to simplify it the easiest way possible. And so what I do is I'm saying basically I want basically my losers. So if I'm, if I'm wrong on a trade, I want my losers to be smaller than my winners. I want my winners to be better. That's how you kind of want to think about it. And it's not about just never taking a loser. Mm -hmm. It's more about keeping your winners bigger than your losers. And if you do that, this is what the formula basically tells you is that you're going to have that positive expectation in your trading strategy is going to be profitable over a longer period of time. And we'll get to a couple examples of potentially positive and negative expectations. But before that, just some final theory here is so let's say you have theoretically created a positive expectation whereby, you know, maybe every time I trade, I'm risking $100 to make $100, a one for one uh, profit loss scenario. And I'm right 55% of the time, and I'm wrong 45% of the time. And so I have a positive expected outcome here. How do I arrive at that positive expected outcome? Well, you can have you know, a positive expected outcome on any game or, or any trading strategy and do it once or twice and still that 45% potential for loss hits just two times in a row because you only did two occurrences, small sample size, uh, essentially. Occurrences are essential to this. And by the law of large numbers, if you have a positive expected outcome of, like in my last scenario, 10 bucks, how do I get to actually realizing that average profit of 10 bucks? Well, it's getting as many occurrences in there as, as possible, that N essentially going to infinity. Yeah, it's really about, I mean, this is talking to you about being consistent in your trading strategy and, and sticking to that strategy and not deviating. And that's, I mean, that's one of the most difficult things to do is not to deviate, especially when your emotions get in the way. It's something you have to be really strict about with yourself. And it's it's important to think about, but when you look at it this way, it all makes kind of sense as why you want to do that. 
Yeah, because if you have, you know, let's say X1 and X2, I have two occurrences and they're wildly different, you know, like one of them, I lost 300 bucks. The other one, I made 100 bucks and I uh, I averaged that out of just over two occurrences and that didn't get to my average expectation. It's like, well, yeah, when you have a small sample size, you have wide variance. If I have committed, you know, over the last couple of years, I've been consistent with my mechanics, making, losing 100 bucks on each of these trades and my odds are in my favor. I'm 55 to 45 there. And I've done it, you know, 100, 200 times. Same with a coin flip. You're more likely to see that 50-50 of tails and heads the more occurrences you have. Anyone can flip a coin three times and be like, I got three heads or I got three tails or, or two versus one. More occurrences key to realizing that positive expectation. But let's get into an example here. And I'm just looking at what can be one of the most straightforward examples Again, not trying to to give anyone any kind of strategy from yours truly, totally out there to find what works for you. But what's always interesting to me, looking at the example of dollar yen here and honing in on long term extremes and and it, it, to me, it's always like a Rorschach test of like you put this in front of someone and say, hey, it's the 20 year low. It's the 20 year high. What's that mean to you? You'll get different opinions from everybody. Oh, it's going to go. It's low. It's going to go lower or it's low. It's going to bounce back. And what's interesting is you can be on both sides of that trade. So you can do your research and go with or against an extreme. Um, but just using this as uh, an example, it's a matter of developing that strategy of, oh, I go with it or I go against it, and I do it for X versus Y every time, and doing the same thing every time this pops up, right? Yeah. I mean, it's to an extent. I mean, when I think about extremes, I'm always worried about like, what happens if the extreme is broken, or is it going to just call that the line in the sand? You never know what's, what's going to happen, but that's where having some sort of strategy in place mm-hmm. is going to keep you from, from getting burned if the extreme breaks or if it comes back, so kind of whatever you want to take as the extreme, if you think it's not enough and it can go further, that's your decision to make, basically. Yeah, if you follow the trend or you're a contrarian, mm-hmm. what have you. And the same goes for swing trading on a week-to-week basis or day trading intraday. You see the pound is down 100 pips versus the dollar. If you think, okay, this thing's going to bounce back or, oh, it's uh, an outlier, it's going to continue for another 20 pips or it's going to bounce back for 20 pips, that's up to you. That's your strategy. Just creating some consistency around it can really help. And and that's where the modeling and everything kicks in. The theoretical meets the practice uh, for an example like this, where, again, you know, you have the expectation calculator in your mind uh, and you can shift these things around, right? Like you can have uh, here you have a positive expectation, like I already talked about, you know, win rate of 55 percent, loss rate of 45 percent. But I'm I'm symmetrical. I'm taking one hundred dollars. I'm losing one hundred dollars every time, creating a positive expected outcome. You can also create ex- a positive expected outcomes by changing that win rate, you know, to 30 percent, but winning, you know, four t- times as much in profits than your losses. Just make sure that you engineer it in the right direction, because the last thing you want to see is Paul you know, a trader that is winning and losing around the same uh, percentage, close to 50-50, but they're losing two or three or four X, which is unsustainable, right? Correct. I mean, that's how you, you basically whittle the account down. And it usually doesn't end well um, when you see that type of kind of scenario. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's if your profit and loss is symmetrical, so if you keep those two things equal, you just have to win more than you lose on your trades. Is that simple? And then if you start changing around your average profit and average loss, then your win rate can change. So if I'm only a 30% of the time I have a winning trade, well, I'm going to need my losses to be smaller, significantly smaller than my profits are. Exactly so right. And yeah, these, think about it. again, are our, our strategy examples, not indications of future results. And yeah, the potential uh, costs and fees not necessarily included. Um, and and that can move, you know, that 55% win rate, uh, the spread, or if a firm charges commissions, that can move that to, you know, 54, 46. So you want to take that into account as well. Thankfully, uh, we have here at IG, right there in the order ticket, the ability to set stop losses and take uh, profits that don't necessarily guarantee execution at a certain price, but they can trigger market orders at, you know, a 
100 pips in profit, 100 pips in loss, or you know, two times as much in profit as the loss, or, or you mess that around with that so you can put your strategy into the ticket. Why don't you walk us through this uh, really quick? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, it's a very simple, easy deal ticket to use. Um, obviously, you click your direction. So whatever your strategy tells you of it's time to buy, it's time to sell, whatever it is, it gives you that sell buy. It immediately tells you what the spread is right there in the middle of there. Um, but yeah, then you go on to your size. So now what's what's the size I'm going to trade? And the size will factor into your P&L at the end of this. So the size is just 0.1, which is a mini lot in Forex. One lot is a full lot, and then a micro lot is a 0.01. Um, it will tell you what it is going to control per pip. Um, now I was talking to Frank earlier. I like that we use the yen example because it's a little bit different than everybody else, all the other currency pairs, but um, it even gives you the notional value. Um, that's just basically the equivalent of 100,000, or sorry, 10,000 in um, dollars. Uh, so $10,000 is a million a little under a million and a half yen. All right, so that's the notional size. It gives me all my sizes. It's gonna control 100 yen per pip. Uh, you can think of that as points. For yen, it's gonna be the second digit after the decimal place. It's also the last big digit on the IG platform. Um, on other currency pairs, it will be the fourth digit after the decimal place. So that's always something to learn. It's all, you always pay attention to what it says on the deal ticket because it kind of gives you all the answers to the test there. Um, obviously, it doesn't tell you which direction to go. Um, but on to the stop loss and take profit field. Um, basically, it's I think it's very self-explanatory, but how I always explain it was this is going to stop a loss at a certain point, and it's going to take profit at a certain point. Now, what IG does is it's not always the same as everyone does it, but we said basically this is 100 pips. So if this goes against me 100 pips, and it's 100 yen per pip, there's where I get a 10,000 yen loss on my stop loss. Now, I'm sure people at home are thinking, what, is a, what does 10,000 yen mean? So you just take 10,000 yen and you divide it by your price. So whatever that is, 10,000 yen divided by 145, 77.5, or 77.6, 77.5. So that's, Sixty-eight dollars and sixty cents. All right, so that's that's how much I'd lose on this trade. All right, if if my stop loss was reached. On the flip side, do the same thing with my, my take profit. Um, or if it's reached, and then I make that ten thousand yen profit instead of losing that sixty-eight dollars and sixty cents, I now make sixty-eight dollars and sixty cents. And it's all set up there. You can do this all pre-trade before you click the place trade button. Um, and then. You basically make the decision there. That's that's your final click. There is that green button that says place to trade. It tells you what your margin is, how much you're basically, how much you're putting up to control this ten thousand dollars or just under one and a half million yen. So that's kind of how the deal ticket works. Um, but yeah, beautiful. Yeah, really rigorous walkthrough there of how this works um, with taking your trade strategy, you know, the expectations, putting those expectations and mechanics into uh, the platform here at the start of the trade and, and, and really having the mechanics play out before you even enter the order. And what's really nice here, just to wrap up, is after the trade uh, is on and, and it's closed and everything else, IG also lets you in the trade analytics tool monitor exactly what we've been talking about here by market and by your total account, which is looking at your win rate, your average profits, your average losses. Am I engineering in, you know, the uh, pound yen market or the Aussie uh, versus USD or the euro dollar market? Am I engineering positive expected outcomes or am I engineering losers? And you can analyze that and uh, change accordingly here. And these, again, are just examples. Uh, but great walkthrough here, uh, Paul, of the theory, the execution, and then analyzing afterwards to uh, create some uh, you know statistical modeling in Forex trading. Paul, thanks as always for joining us and everybody thanks for staying tuned here to the program